Paul Tremblay's A Head Full of Ghosts has one of my favorite titles for a horror book in recent memory. It invokes a lot of the uncertainty and dread that the story's going for and succeeds in delivering in a lot of ways. Basically, uh, this one's a modern exorcism story set against the backdrop of a reality television program featuring a crumbling middle-class family. The narrative is interesting here, interweaving interviews, recollections, and blog posts to tell the story of The Possession, a TV show chronicling the Barrett family and their struggles to find out what's happening to their teenage daughter Marjorie, who appears to be showing signs of either mental illness or legitimate demonic possession. The story is told through the eyes of Mary, Marjorie's younger sister, who was eight at the time of the events recounted and has spent years since dealing with the effects of the TV show and those that it had on her family. The structure here is interesting. Spliced into the main flashback style narrative are interview segments with adult Mary as well as blog posts from The Last Final Girl, dissecting the nature of the Possession reality show. These become increasingly interesting as the story progresses, and Tremblay meets out details well through this piece. One of the most interesting aspects of this book is that we as readers never really know quite what's going on. Most of the information we get here is from a woman recounting things that happened to her at age 8, so we're at the mercy of an unreliable narrator, and things get further muddied by the inclusion of the whole reality TV show angle. There are times when we feel Marjorie's actions are totally within her own control, and times we really don't know what's happening. Despite this, the characters tend to be pleasant to be around and hear about, so what could be infuriating is instead intriguing. I always like when a book allows a reader to come to their own conclusions and ponder what was meant by certain turns and elements, and there's plenty of that in A Head Full of Ghosts. At its heart, it's a story about a tragedy befalling a family, and how it affects the life of a little girl. Sometimes answers can dull some of the pain, but in the end it still comes down to accepting the reality of what happened and moving forward in whatever way is healthiest. And therein, by the end of the book, lie some of what I found to be the most poignant parts of the story. Though I might have liked parts of this to move a little quicker, and exorcism stories aren't really my favorite archetype, I do think the characters and subtext here help me push through as a reader. This is a horror book, and though it doesn't go too hard, it presents some unsettling set pieces and incidents, especially when viewed through the eyes of a child. Like I mentioned before, I think the title of the book is fantastic, and it puts a reader in the right mind for a story like this. Ghosts can be defined as any number of things, and as we age, these definitions tend to expand in ways that don't make sense until you grow and experience pain, life, and loss. Though it is an extreme horror by any means, I'd give slight trigger warnings for uh, self-harm, suicidal ideations, religious fanaticism, and mental illness, if those are things that might turn a person off. A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay is available pretty much anywhere you get books. You can check out paultremblay.net if you are interested in this one or want to check out some of his other works. Um, I'd recommend this one, it's, it's pretty good, and like I said, the horror didn't hit with me as much as some of the other elements, like uh, dealing with trauma as a child and what, what effects that has on a person as they age and get older. Um, so yeah, I'd say definitely check this one out. I recommend it. What do you think, Winston? Did you like A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay? A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay gets three Richard Scary Apple Cars.